Hi, my name is Mike. I make music as domestic scene, and today I'm building my very first Eurorack module. Uh, I've decided to start out with a power bus so that everything else that I build I can test. Uh, so I bought the uh, Bifaco Excalibus. Uh, it's a really, it's a really weighty PCB board. Um, doesn't seem to be too much to it. There's uh, all of the uh, power sockets that need to go onto the bus. And then just like a small, uh, see if you can see that, there's like a small little uh, section there for the uh, actual power uh, distribution. Um, yeah, I think looking at this, looking over the instructions, feeling pretty confident about doing this, assuming that I can solder something. Uh, so yeah, I guess it's just time to take the plunge. Let's do it. Right, so the instructions say that I need to uh, start here with these IDC connectors and it says, well actually the instructions say don't do this if you don't know what you're doing. That's not true. <laughs> it says, I'll, I'll quote it because I don't want to misquote it. Uh, if, you do need, if you do not feel confident with your skills, please drop us a mail for advice before starting the build. This is a critical part of your system and an error might damage your modules. Uh, so I will take my life and my modules life into my hands and attempt to build this thing. Um, yeah, anyway, the first, uh, the first thing you need to do is you need to, to put these sockets on and uh, hopefully, I don't know if you can see that, I'll try this camera over here. Uh, there's two rows of pins on these sockets and those, those pins need to kind of like, like squish this board, sandwich the board. Um, and it points out that there's a little triangle that needs to match the triangle on the PCB. Um, so you can barely make it out, but there's a little triangle on the uh, plastic part of this socket, and there's a little triangle uh, printed on the PCB. So I'll start placing them. Uh, first, I suppose I should turn my <laughs> uh, soldering iron on. Let it heat up. These are pretty tight. It's kind of a little bit tough to get that onto the board, actually. Okay, so that's lined up. The instructions suggest that you uh, solder one of the pins. Uh, once you get it on here, just to hold it. Um, but that's so tight, I don't see that going anywhere. So I might just try to put all the sockets on and then do all of the soldering at once. Right, so I've got all of the sockets on the board. Um, and like I said, pressure is really keeping them on there. So um, I guess it's time for me to try soldering for the first time. Wish me luck. Uh, the instructions do point out that uh, flux is advised in this application. So I have a flux pen here. It's not flowing as I open it up, so I think it's one of these things where you kind of got to dab it a few times to get the felt uh, impregnated. So yeah, now I can see a bit of flux coming out, so I'm going to get some flux on these connectors. Let's 
start with just the first five and see how it goes. Right. So you want to touch the pin and the pad to heat them both up um, for about a second and then add the solder. Hopefully with the flux it should just flow into place. And like I said, this is my first try. Oop. I think I'm not letting it heat up quite long enough. There it is. You know, this is really strange. Uh, I don't know if it's because of this solder or anything that I'm doing, but the lavalier microphone. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to take a break. So this is really weird. I don't know if it's because of anything that's on my table here with the electronics, the soldering iron or any of that, but uh, I'm wearing a, a lavalier microphone and as, I, as I'm like leaning over to do uh, the solder joint, I'm getting shocked a lot by that microphone, which is making me a bit nervous. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna switch microphones. Uh, sorry if the sound changes, if it sounds worse or anything. Um, but this is, yeah, this is odd, and I, I think I need to think about how I'm using ground right now because that shouldn't be happening. <laughs> so I'll talk to you in a minute. Right, so hopefully that fixed it. I just switched to a condenser mic, so I think there's probably some noise outside my, my window there, and this will probably pick some of that up, but yeah. I, there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing like leaning over to do your very first solder joint ever and getting like a jolt of electricity <laughs> in your neck. That was, uh, that was, that was something. Um, however, I was trying to play it cool and it looks like I managed to do a pretty decent uh, solder joint. So I'm going to get back into this and solder the whole thing up and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go from there. So I haven't actually finished uh, soldering the sockets on yet. There's something that I realized while I was doing it, and that's that that flux pen that I was trying to use just sucked. Um, it really wasn't working very well. So I happen to have uh, this here. This is a um, uh, this is flux also, just in a slightly different form, and I'm able to just squirt some right on to the pins. Um, and man, it made a huge difference. Uh, flux really, really helped. Um, and as I was going along further, I realized something, which is that for my very first set of solder uh, joints that I'm making, uh, although I said I was going to do through-hole stuff first, this is definitely not a through-hole sort of project. This is, uh, yeah, this is like putting on, what, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, uh, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26 IC sockets. That's pretty much, uh, that's pretty much a surface mount project. So <laughs> I maybe started off with something harder than I anticipated, but it's been going really well. And now like the joints are looking great. So I'm going to, um, I'm gonna just demonstrate what I've been doing with the with the flux and how much smoother it goes and uh, yeah, check it out. Hmm, this is looking fairly in focus on my close up. I hope. Um, so there's a little bead of flux along there. And I just get the tip on there, the flux starts to melt, and you just get a little bit of solder on there, and the solder just flows right onto that pin. Um, and I've noticed too that if you're trying to do it for every pin, the uh, solder kind of builds up on the tip of the so soldering iron. And sometimes you don't even need to add more, you can just kind of go across and the, the the extra solder on the tip of the soldering iron just flows into those pins. It's actually not nearly as hard as it looks. Um, but this flux really helps this flow. So 
So there I've just done two much quicker. Probably I did both of those in the time that it took me just to try to do the very first pin uh, that I soldered on this board. So <laughs> um, yeah, it's getting better. So I'm going to finish this up and uh, then we'll look at the rest of the parts. Right, so the sockets are done. Um, now I'm just going to clean up the flux, clean up the board a little bit with a bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol. And then I think the next thing we need to do is uh, add the resistors. Um, I believe, not really checking it out, but um, on this side of the board, I think that's where all the resistors go. Um, there, there's some stuff going on uh, over here. I haven't really read that far into the manual, but on either side of this uh, this bus, there's some through hole spots. And looking at it, I th I'm actually thinking the resistors are down here. Maybe one of them's over here. Um, you can kind of see it on the uh, printed uh, silk screen. Um, so anyway, I'll read the instructions before I make that assumption. Uh, finish cleaning up this board and then solder on the rest of the components. Right, so that's done. Um, take a look at this here. So we've got uh, two different values of resistors. Maybe I was saying capacitors earlier. I'm not quite sure. Whatever. Resistors. Um, so we have a... 820R and a 1K resistor. Um, the resistors are not polarized, so it doesn't matter which way they go in. Um, so I need to find the resistor that's gray, red, black, black, brown. Um, it's kind of tough to see. But I definitely see the red stripe on this and the other resistors color code does not have red so I'm gonna say that this is the one that I need to do first <clears throat> so I'm gonna take a look at this double check what I'm doing I need R3 and R4 so R3 is right there a bit of resistance on that hole. I wonder why that is. It looks like there's a bit of metal. I can't... I've got this blue mat underneath here um, and I can see blue through all the other holes on this board except for one of the legs on R3. So on the off chance that I got some solder in there. I don't know how I would have. Yeah, there's actually two of these that look like they're blocked. The other one's on this. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Man, this is going to be tough. I really don't know if this is going to show up on camera, but uh, I don't know. I doubt you can see it, but there's definitely something blocking those two holes. So I'm going to have to deal with that really quick. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can freely put my tweezer in that hole right there. And this one, not so much. I mean, if I really start pushing on it, I can get through, I think. Okay. Seeing some blue on the other side, that's good. It's still tight, but I think I can get this resistor in there now.
Yeah. Well, that was fun. <laughs> All right. So R3 and R4. Okay. So now my first through hole uh, soldering joint. No problem. A little bit of a problem on my second one though. We'll get there. <laughs> This is actually pretty, pretty relaxing. Okay, those are looking good. Do the diode. Diode is polarized, so there is a small gray strip on one side of this diode. It says the black or white line on the diode must match with the white line on the diode symbol on the PCB silkscreen. <clears throat> it says that this is pretty hard to fit. You gotta kind of bend it tight. It says to use pliers, but I don't have a good pair of pliers with me right now. So we'll just see if I can get a tight right angle on this as is. Hope so. Okay. So the stripe on the diode needs to match the stripe on the diode's silk screen which it does, push it in tight, seems to fit. Not so scary, that's cool. So now we need to do the LEDs, these are of course polarized so you can tell one leg is, uh, one leg is longer than the other. This is the long leg, it's the positive one, and the short is the negative. So, long leg in the positive side. Oh, do I have another one of these blocked holes? Huh. This is really strange. It's another one of those blocked holes. there and it just doesn't quite want to go in. Which is odd, is there anything going? And I'm sure it's not the LED, it's this board. <laughs> there. Okay. Yeah, I really had to force that one. But got there in the end. So LEDs are in. Electrolytic capacitors. These matter too. There's a long leg and a short leg. So long leg of the capacitor is positive. This goes into C1 and C4. And both of these are the same value. So how do you tell 
which one is positive and which one is negative. Okay. So, yeah, so I've just looked it up. Um, and this is using the symbol like a, a strong black line, kind of like a hollow line, a little tiny positive symbol on this board. It's hard to see that positive symbol, but that's matching up. So the lighter line is going to be the positive, assuming that the internet is not lying to me. So capacitors in, regulator. Actually, I think that's it for those. I'm going to solder those ones up before I move on to the rest of them, because now we're on to uh, some slightly different parts. So. Okay, so those guys are all on, uh, and now it's just the last couple parts that we got to do. Right, so now we just need to test it and find out if it worked. Um, it's a couple days later now because I didn't have the right power cord to test it when I uh, soldered everything the other night. Um, but I've ordered the right cable off of Amazon. I have it now and I'm ready to plug this thing in. Um, and theoretically everything should light up. What I'm looking for is uh, these three LEDs, and I believe that this um, this button itself lights up. So if it doesn't blow up, things should be good. Right on. So we've got lights in all the right places, and uh, so far nothing's hot. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I'm going to test this out uh, with my multimeter and uh, there's some test points on the board here um, by each of these LEDs. There's a negative 12 rail, a positive 12 volt rail, and a positive 5 volt rail. And there's these just these little metal pads here where you can test out uh, what's going on. So I'm going to test the negative 12 volt, and I got negative 12.06, that's good. Positive 12 is 12.08, looking good. And the positive 5 volt, I've got 5.09. So I'm going to call that a success. I think everything's working the way it should and I can start building actual modules and start playing some stuff. Um, yeah, so now that I've finished building this board, uh, I guess there's a, there's a couple of things looking back on it uh, that, um, that I can say about it. First of all, the build was really easy. There's not a whole lot of components to this thing, um, but these, uh, these actual connectors, um, the actual power connectors, since they are just kind of like pressure fit on that board, they're still they're still technically an SMD soldering uh, job. So I didn't find it too difficult, um, particularly once I started getting going with the flux. Uh, that really made a big difference. Um, in the end, I th I feel really lucky that I started with the harder thing, even though I I kind of I didn't realize I was doing that when I went into it. Uh, I was thinking, oh yeah, this is this is a fairly easy easy soldering job, but but no, these are basically like any of the IC components that you would put onto a PCB board. Um, I found myself kind of doing uh, what I've I've seen elsewhere referred to as like a uh, what is it the um, just like the drag soldering method, um, where you get some solder on and you just kind of drag across the pins. Um, and the flux helps it flow into the right place. I, I found myself doing that almost naturally. I wasn't thinking about that, 
that technique, particularly when I started going. Um, but the way that I was, the way that I was using the tool, uh, the soldering iron and the solder, uh, it just kind of naturally led me to to move the solder across the pins that way, and I could see the way it was flowing. So it just kind of came natural to do that. And I was pretty intimidated when I watched YouTube videos earlier about uh, this drag soldering method. Uh, I didn't know how easy it was going to be. So given that basically the first thing I did on this board was a ton of drag soldering, I feel kind of empowered to go for some more complicated stuff now. Um, the rest of it went really smooth. Uh, the module works. Uh, assuming that when I plug something into each of those sockets, uh, the, the end module gets power, I think we're good to go. So um, yeah, I think going forward, another thing, uh, now that I'm thinking about it, I, I think a piece of equipment that I could really use is uh, some sort of magnification. Um, I, do have, uh, I do have this, um, but that magnifying glass, I don't know, I don't really like it, and it's not super convenient uh, while I was working on it. I, I've seen you can get like the, um, the visor that has the glass magnifying uh, lenses on it. Or maybe, maybe I could even look at a pair of reading glasses or something like that. But I need something, because when you're trying to look at the, uh, the small lettering, some of these solder joints and stuff, it can put a lot of strain on, on well, it did put a lot of strain on my eyes. So I, I'll probably look for something like that. Um, other things that I wish I had bought before I went into this project is uh, like a nylon brush for cleaning off the flux. I'm going to have to do that. I still need to clean the flux off of this board. There's some spots where I can kind of see some residue. And trying to clean it up with uh, the isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel just isn't good. The paper towel kind of shreds a little bit, so I wasn't really going super into detail with it. Like, I, I just kind of gave up on it because I didn't want to get the, uh, the paper towel just stuck all over all these components. So. Um, I'm gonna get that brush, clean this thing up eventually, but yeah, I'm happy. Like, I'm, I'm super pumped that my first build turned out good. Um, as far as I can tell, everything's working fine, and uh, yeah, I'm excited to make another one. So I hope you'll join me for the next video. Uh, I think I'm probably gonna be uh, building the, uh, I don't know if that's coming through, the Penrose Quantizer by Sonic Potions. Yeah, so if you like this video, if you found it useful, if you learned anything or just enjoyed laughing at the stupid mistakes I was making, uh, subscribe to my channel. It'd be really nice to have you along for the ride. Cheers.